Welcome back to Coffee with Kerry Lynn. It is a beautiful day, but it is going to get very hot this afternoon here in the far north of Maine. We are underneath the meditation and wellness tent trying to get a nice little breeze in my backyard secret garden up along the Canadian border in the Corona, Maine. I hope everyone is having a nice, warm, sunny summer day wherever you may be. I hope you're having a day filled with fabulosity and good coffee because everybody deserves a good cup of coffee throughout their day. If you've got that weak, dirty dishwater coffee, just go throw it on out and brew yourself a nice, fresh, aromatic, bold. Maybe you don't like bold coffee. Maybe you like the breakfast blend. Whatever floats your boat, go get yourself a nice, warm, fresh cup of coffee. It is a smile in your cup throughout the day. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, today we're going to be talking about the arrest of Telegram CEO Pavel Durov. He was arrested when his plane hit the tarmac in Paris, France. We're going to be talking about that, but first we have a clock to run out, you know, techno gods and all. Uh, what happens on these platforms that you're not so able to freely discuss things. Today is the baby's due date and baby girl ain't here. <laughs> there is no sign right now of baby girl wanting to be here today. And uh, it's just typical for the women in our family. We're stubborn. We do what we want to do when we want to do it and why we want to do it. And that's just how it is. Nobody's going to tell us what to do, when to do it, where to do it, or why to do it. We're going to tell you. So uh, she's not here yet. The last date that baby gets to have a mind of her own is Friday. So I will be disappearing sometime between the time this video is uploading and Friday because the doctors have decided everything is fine. Everything is well. Mom is good. Baby's good. It is a higher risk pregnancy. So the doctors have decided baby only has till Friday to decide she is ready to enter the world and greet her family. And then they're going to make the decision for her. <laughs> Rude awakening. That's what I call it. So I will disappear once baby is born because the older grandchildren will be here with us on the homestead. And we're going to be doing all kinds of wild, wacky, fun stuff with them and just having a great time. And we are going into a long weekend here in the States. It is Labor Day weekend, so I just might take the rest of the weekend off. Who knows? But I definitely will be back on Tuesday. So please keep watching my videos. I have a lot. Of, I have like over 300 videos. So there's plenty for everybody to watch. And keep watching my videos because it keeps me up in the algorithm. Because when I talk about stuff that I'm going to talk about in about a, two or three minutes... I get plunged to the bottom of the algorithm. I get punished, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, for talking about issues that other people don't want me to discuss. People in a higher power position, God-like people. And uh, what happens when I do videos like this is we get pushed to the bottom of the algorithm, but not just the video itself, the entire channel gets pushed to the bottom of the algorithm. The best way you can help me out, and it's absolutely free, is give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like the content, that's fine. Subscribe to my channel. If you don't want to subscribe to my channel, just share this particular video or any other video I have. It actually brings the channel back up in the algorithm. We as creators see a lot on the back end that you, my audience, does not see. Like when you look at my viewer count, you might be seeing that 75 people watch the video. When I go on the back end of my video in all my creator content uh, studio, I'm seeing 110 people have watched the video because, you know, I stoop around on my husband's uh, YouTube and I can see what you guys are seeing and then I can see the reality of it. I also know that 19% 19, 19 of my viewership watches me on their television. YouTube let me know this morning that I do have 19% of the people that watch my show watch it on a TV. And that is why to the persistent people that complain about the size of my video, that is why you are watching me on a big screen TV and that is why I don't fill your screen. It is a narrower video because of the format that we 
video and we don't video like everybody else in the world. We do our own thing over here on Coffee with Kerry Lynn. So that's why you're not, you know, you're not seeing me on this huge, you don't want to see me on a big screen TV anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, Pavel Durov. He is the CEO of Telegram and Telegram, the platform itself, has allegations. There's always allegations about the platform that the platform is being used for illicit activities such as illicit. Y'all know I can't say it. And trafficking. We got a lot of traffic goes by my house all the time. It's always trafficking around here. Traffic, traffic, traffic. You all know what I'm talking about because my, my audience is very, very intelligent and knows that we have to speak in code unless we are on the Mean Green Freedom of Speech platform. Go on over there and uh, we will be making a lot more content geared toward that platform simply because I'm t sick of talking like an idiot. And um, I think a lot of serious storied content creators are going to have to go over there just to get the stories out as we near November here in the States because November is a very, very important month in our country and not because of Thanksgiving. Ladies and gentlemen, because my mom's birthday's in November and my mother-in-law's birthday's in November. It's a great month. It's very important. It is very important because of that because without them, we wouldn't be here. Um, no, we have a we have a, a thing happening the first week of November in our country, and I think it's going to get very very difficult if people cannot speak their minds. So I think a lot of people are going to be over on doing their videos. So I don't want to drive anybody off of any platform, but let me tell you, if you don't have an account over there yet, you should go and uh, check out the content over there. So what happened was Pavel Durov was arrested for the allegations against Telegram. And we all know that there is a deep seedy underbelly to these platforms. We all know it exists. Very sick people access it. And um, the CEOs try their best with their programmers to contain it. It is not the reality of most people. Most people get on these platforms, you know, you don't even think about it because it's invisible to most normal people and the psychopaths know where to find it and that's it. So all these platforms have problems, including YouTube. YouTube has some, some pretty dicey problems itself that need to be corrected uh, of the illicit nature. But anyways, long story short, Pavel Durov, he's arrested for the allegations against his company, but we all know, we all know that is not why. The true facts of it is anybody who runs a freer speech platform, all those CEOs are being told that backdoors need to be built into their software information, readily accessible to, uh, my grandkids are learning the alphabet, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, and, uh, well, agencies. They want access. They want access to anybody's information at any time, and it needs to be built into the program. And there are a handful, a handful, maybe three, maybe four, five, a handful. There, I got my handful there, five, um, that I can think of off the top of my head that say, no, nay, nay, we ain't doing this. Um, there is a thing in the United States called the first amendment and people have the right to express that amendment. Um, should they want to use it? So we have about a handful, that would be five, uh, platforms that you can speak freely on telegram being one of them. Now, after Pavel was arrested, Chris Pavlowski, he is the CEO of Rumble and he was in Europe. He fled because these guys know that it is not the allegations that are happening against their companies that are making these arrests happen. Um, Pavel Durov is being used as an example. 
WikiLeaks comes to mind, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world. There, there's another example of um, certain overlords that want to control certain narratives. And we all know, because it's out there, Elon has said it himself. He was also told, look over here, look what we could do to you. And we want X, Y, and Z. We want access. We want you to control. We want you to stifle what people are saying on your platform. And these people have said no. And so now they will make an example out of Pavel Durov. Absolutely. We'll make an example out of that gentleman. There are only, like I said, a handful of companies that will actually stand up and say, no, you're not getting backdoor access. We're not just going to hand things over. You do things the right way. You go to court. You give us warrants. You get the proper paperwork done. And then we'll have to comply, but we're just not handing this stuff over to you. And this trend is going to keep happening. We saw... A trend of lawfare start, and when lawfare didn't work, well, assassination attempts happened. And when that doesn't work, well, now we're just going to start stifling platforms uh, that allow people to speak. Because a lot's coming up. Whether people want to understand... Um, the gravity of the situation or not. I know a lot of people want you, they want to put their head in the sand and stay there. But there is a lot coming up, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to have to be talked about and will be talked about on these other platforms. Won't be talked about here because they're not going to allow us to do that. But they will be talked about other platforms because in, in my entire lifetime of reading and studying history of the United States of America and um, history of the world. I'm a big history buff and I've never seen a setup for a war that has never happened. They don't set the chessboard up, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, and then decide it ain't gonna happen. We'll take, bring everybody home and it's over. It's just Check me. Nope, that's not how it works. Uh, they set up the chessboard. They get all their pieces where they need to be, very strategically. And then next thing you know, um, we are in a conflict, in a crisis, in a war. And this particular situation is most likely going to involve their draft. And they're not only going to draft your sons, but they're going to draft your daughters. And that's just the facts around uh what is happening. Uh, we've got November coming up. Like I said, it's a super important month and not just because my mom and my mother-in-law were born in that month and, you know, holidays and all that jazz, but, um, it's because the tide is going to turn. You have days, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world before the tide actually turns. And I do urge and implore everybody to get ready for that. Brace yourself do whatever you have to do, get right with your Lord, whatever you need to do, do a lot of praying, do a lot of crying. There is a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. Get your pantry ready. Winter's coming. Uh, get your pantry ready. We here in the far north of Maine have horrific winters. So we always have a, uh, a well-stocked pantry just in case. And there's also other things that are happening that I'm going to be doing videos on coming right up. We have a strange fungus coming out of China. We have uh, MPOX. You know where this is going. I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm digesting a lot of very important information that we are going to be talking about here in future episodes of Coffee with Carrie Lynn. And a lot of people will not pay attention and I will have subscribers that drop off. Uh, because I can't always do the fun gossipy news. I, I am what I am. And I talk about everything. And I want to build a community that supports each other. And that also means a community that helps each other. 
So we are going to be going through some really wicked dark times, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world. And together, although we are all in different boats, we are all in the same storm. Some people are on a yacht. Some people are in their cabin cruisers. Some people are on rafts. Other people are already in the water with their safety vest on. And we just need to be there for each other. And we need to get each other through. I will be telling more stories about the Great Depression and how all my grandparents lived through the Great Depression and World War II and what their childhoods and their teenage years and their early adult years was all about. So we're going to be doing a lot more of that. And uh, I like telling stories because I'm the orator in our family. I collect the stories. I tell the stories that my grandmothers told me. And lessons can be gleaned from um, oral tradition. So it is very important that we keep the stories of our individual families going. You know, I often tell the story that I am the 13th generation great-granddaughter of Samuel Gorton. Samuel Gorton fought for freedom of religion. He left England. He came to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Um, he was not appreciated there and had to sneak away in a snowstorm and it was actually a blizzard in the middle of the night so that he wouldn't get hung because he believed in freedom of religion and that got him to Little Compton, Rhode Island and Ann Hutchinson and from there uh, he met Roger Williams and then at the behest of Roger Williams, he threw over the crown and became governor of Rhode Island, not once, ladies and gentlemen, but twice. And uh, the king had a want to have a hanging on him. And they caught nine of his posse, let's say, and uh, they were all hung. But my great grandfather got away. And he got to um, the West Bay and was hiding out and he was actually the founder of Warwick, Rhode Island. The Earl of Warwick did bestow upon Samuel Gorton the land and in honor of that, my great, 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 13 generations back, great granddaddy um, founded Warwick, Rhode Island, but he overthrew the crown twice and that's the stock I'm made of. So surprise, no, people are like, oh, that's gonna explain a lot. And I know we've had several discussions here on the homestead since the beginning. I, uh, I've been on Facebook a long time and I've been spewing my stuff on Facebook. So I'm going to be gulagged. We know this, but it's just the tradition of my family. But it's very important to tell the stories of your family. Your history is super important, ladies and gentlemen, because your ancestors loved. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of love stories behind your existence and thousands of extreme stories of hardship. And yet here you are, and we're going to need those stories. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, comment in the comment section below. Be the kindness you want to see in the world. Do not be Kakamala Harris or Tim Walls. Carpe diem, beautiful creatures of the world, because nobody promised you a tomorrow.